Hey, welcome back to the ABC Networking YouTube channel. My name is Dobias Veninge and this time I'm going to have a look at the Airwave API because I love APIs and I really like REST APIs to get the information out of it to see how they're working. And the last few weeks I got a lot of questions regarding the API. So what I want to do is I want to make a series and for this first series we're going to have a look how you can use curl to authenticate yourself to the API and to retrieve some information from the API. And we're also going to have a look how you can do this with Python so that you can already start a little bit more into the, the programming side and maybe make your own scripts or programs around it. Then I will make another video as I have a little bit more look how you can do it with Postman. That's a Google Chrome extension that you can use to test the API and try some API calls. And then the last series video in this series will probably be around how you can post some information towards this API. So let's have a little bit of a look where you can find documentation because I think that's important. So this is my Airwave server. I just run it in a, in a virtual box environment on my, uh, on my laptop so that I can play around with it. If you want to find some information around the API, from the home page, you go to the documentation page. And then here you can see interfacing with AMP. You can see state and statistical XML API documentation and also for the location. API and some sample uh, HTML application utilizing the location XML API. So if you, for example, open this one, then you get the API guide. You can see the query APIs and the one we are going to use is the API detail to get some, uh, some detailed information out of this. Okay, so let me pull this away. Let me first show you how you can do this with curl. So with curl, you can, uh, you can type some commands. I'm using the verbose mode so that you see all the details. The minus K is used in order to make sure that we don't need to trust the certificate from the server. Uh, C jar. And then I'm going to put some data in there. Credential zero is admin. Then minus D. Credential one is also admin in my case I'm using the uh, using the default username password then I'm going to put the destination here destination is forward slash then I'm going to put another one and that's login that is log in and then uh, I'm going to put the address of my airwave server 172, let me see what I already typed in, 172.16.0.3 slash login. Okay, so now let's try to see if this is working. And you can see I received a cookie handler. And by using that cookie, I can start communicate with the API. But I also, uh, you saw that I was using the minus C slash C jar. So if everything is correct, I have a file here. Um, that's the minus C jar. So he pasted the cookie into this um, into this C jar file that I provided. So this way we can receive minus V minus K minus B. And now we provide that C jar file that we're going to use as cookie. And I'm going to provide the location. So again, the IP address, that's where we start with. And then I want to retrieve the... Uh, details of the uh, of the AP data and you can see that I'm able to retrieve this from the API so this is nice this is the way you can do with curl you can find much more information how you can do it with curl on the internet so I'm not going to spend too much time of it I think for the rest you can figure it out on your own but so let's do something more interesting and let's connect it with Python so let me open up here let me start Python okay there we have a uh, Python, and of course you can uh, use your IDE or whatever you want to do uh, to write a program, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to use here. Um, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to import a module called requests, and that module is I'm going to use to, uh, to communicate. You saw that I was using the minus D with curl, so I'm going to set some variables here to make sure we have some, um, some uh, correct data that we can use in order to authenticate. And we, I get back, you can see that I'm using the credential zeros again. Credential zero 
is admin. And I'm adding their credential one in. Credential one is also admin. And I'm adding the destination in there. And I think you already get the point. What are we going to do now? And of course, the login will be in there. Okay, so this is my variable data. You can verify this. That's what I create. I hope I didn't make a typo, but that sees correctly, but we'll figure it out. Then I'm also going to create a header. I'm called that variable headers. And I'm going to do content type. And then the semicolon, and I call that application slash x www form url and code it and then i'm using uh, cache control no cache okay let me verify this content type application form url encoded and cache control no cache so that looks correct so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to set a variable uh, amp session is request that's the module i and i need to make sure i do this before i make the connection because uh, otherwise it tries to connect once and I want to make sure that this becomes a session because we need to be able to communicate with the API okay so that's being done you can see that's created now I'm going to create another variable login amp and what I'm going to do now is amp session that's the one we just created we're going to post some data to this API and we are going to post that HTTPS of course, that's important. 1603 slash login. That's the same as you saw we're using it. Um, now I'm going to use my variables. So I'm going to use my headers. Uh, header is my headers variable. Uh, and my data is my data variable. And I'm also going to use verify is false because that's the same as the minus K option. Uh, so in order that we don't need to trust the certificate. Okay, let's hope this goes well. I um, think I made a mistake. Um, let me see. Oh, sorry, this needs to be headers. So I got an insecurity request, an insecure request warning because that's due to the uh, unverified HTTPF request. But we will know that already because we did the verify is false. So now login amp we can see that we got a response 200 meaning okay so that's just a normal http response so you can also check this by status code by the way you see and now you can do there login amp and you can verify all the options you have so we can even do login amp dot text for example uh, or dot content so we can verify some information what did we treat back uh, dot headers you can see that even the uh, x biscotti code is in here so that you can use if you want to push some information back to it but we can also see the cookies because that's why we create a session uh, cookies and that's where you can see our cookie handler is in here so that we can use in order to communicate with it so now what we did is we are logged on to the api and we now can get some data out of the api so let me do this is create another variable using this amp session that we created again and do a get https of course this is the same ip address and we using the ap detail again dot xml so we're using the headers again and that's my headers variable and data oh data is not needed now because we don't need to push anything we're going to get anything so verify is false let's hope i did everything correct okay i got my insecure request warning again but it sees that i get some content so let me do an out out amp okay the response is okay 
So let's do a print on the out amp dot content. Hey, you can see that I got this data coming back from uh, from the API, and I have it now in a variable. So and I can even put it into another variable, in to make sure that I have it separate that I can work with. For example, out amp. Uh, oh, sorry, out amp dot content. So now if I do a type AP detail, you can see that I have a string with everything in there. Okay, so that's good. Now we have some data. So what do we can do? I'm good, just going to give you some some examples what you can do with it, right? Let let me for example import um, XML dot E tree dot element tree. Do that as ET. Okay, we have that one, so let's create a tree as et dot uh, no, no, sorry, no, sorry, uh, from string, and let's take the AP detail file. So now I'm going to uh, create an XML uh, uh, tree out of it. So you can see, and then if I do the tree, you can see that I can uh, have different options that I can that I can do with it. So, but now what we want to do, for example, is let me give you as an example. If we want to find all the MAC addresses in there, I can do a tree dot iter, and then I can provide a tag is for example MAC address semicolon, and I can do a print dot i dot text. And you can see I got all the MAC addresses in there if I need it for my asset management system or whatever I want to do with it. And I'm going to give you a little bit of another example. I'm going to copy paste that because I already created that. Otherwise, the video will take so long. Okay, so what I do here is I'm going to go again with the iter, but now I check on the interface parameter or on the interface tag. And then I'm going to get the idea, the idea into a variable. I'm going to get the MAC address into a variable. The operational state is the administrative, and I print this for every interface. So if I do this, you can see that out of every interface, uh, I print some information there. So this way you can get details out of your, uh, your API, or if you have multiple management systems and they all have a REST API, you can pull multiple data, compare data with each other, or make it in a visible dashboard any way you want to do it. That's why I love APIs, because you get the flexibility. So if you like it, Please like this video if you have any questions or examples or remarks. Uh, put that in the comment fields of the uh, uh, of this video, and uh, I will. Uh, the next video will be about how you can use Postman to check against the Airwave API. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.